Hello there, this is Richard Smith from DigiSkills Cymru um, and this is an interactive, self-directed and self-paced course uh, for tutors in adult education and for anyone else interested in the emerging learning technology of Open Badges. So this session is entitled Introduction to Open Badges. So very briefly, just to give you some background, DigiSkills Cymru um, is a Wales Union Learning Fund project. It is a project created by Unison, the trade union for public service workers, and is funded by the Welsh Government through the Wales Union Learning Fund. Uh, the project is funded until the end of March in 2017. We also have three other Unison Wolf projects, all called Connecting Learners, um, which cover the various regions of Wales. My project, DigiSkills Cymru, is hosted by Adusk Odolion Cymru, Adult Learning Wales, which is the um, large adult learning provider that operates across the entire um, length and breadth of Wales. So throughout this video presentation, um, you will see the pause symbol emerge at different points. This is a call to action for you um, as the learner on this course to pause the video and follow one of the links in the video and take part in an activity. The purpose of today is to get you in the position where you as, a, as an educator or as somebody interested in training and development will be able to build a badge. Now, first of all, the first way we're going to do this is to get you signed up to Open Badge Academy. Open Badge Academy is one of the foremost badge issuing platforms that um, are available on the internet. Um, you're going to sign up today as a learner and then by the end of the session you'll be in a position to maybe join Open Badge Academy as a badge issuer in your own right. Today you're going to be following two badge challenges and they are from Digital Me's Get Started with Badges suite of bad Open Badges available through the Open Badge Academy. So first of all the sign up process. Some people who have taken part in courses with DigiSkills Cymru in the past will already have an Open Badge Academy account and will already be part of the DigiSkills Cymru Academy. If that is not the case, then first of all you need to download the Open Badge Academy app. And you can download the Open Badge Academy app by going to the web address bit.ly slash 2 oba all in uppercase, and then lowercase i, and then uppercase os. So that's bit.ly 2 oba iOS. When you have that app on your iPad, um, you can join Open Badge Academy. So, first of all, open the app and click the join button, and you'll be joining as an individual at this stage. As I said before, if you have already joined Open Badge Academy through DigiSkills Cymru, you don't need to do this step. If you're new to this, you need to join the Open Badge Academy um, through OBA Academy, not through DigiSkills Cymru. So click the Join OBA Academy button. Fill in your details. Give yourself a, a username that you'll remember and a password that you remember. Choose your group alumni. Confirm that you're over 13 years old and click the join button. And you may see this message. I think um, that it may not show this on your, on your iPad. Don't worry, you're now in the position to log in. So you do this um, by opening the app again, go into the login button, filling in your username and password and clicking login. Then what you need to do is to go to the library, the badge library. This is where you'll find your open badges. Once in badge library, you need to search 
and the first badge you need to search for is called Badge Explorer. When you find Badge Explorer, touch the icon and it will open the badge and then you'll be able to start that badge, so you need to click Start. After that, after that, you can go back into the badge library and search for badge designer. If you find when you find the badge designer badge, touch it, it'll open this screen, and you can click start on that as well. When you return through the menu to my page, you will see that under badges I'm taking, you'll have Badge Designer and Badge Explorer. And those are the two badges that you're going to complete during this session. So I'm just going to take you through some of the basics of Open Badges, explaining what an Open Badge is, why people might want to use Open Badges, and how we in DigiSkills Cymru have used Open Badging in the past. So a badge is a way of recognising and verifying that somebody has a skill, has had an experience, or has a level of authority or competence in a particular area. Now a badge um, you, may, you may have earned in the past, badges through um, scouting or guiding. Um, people earn badges in the police and in the military uh, for having completed certain training, for having taken part in certain activities, or having reached a certain rank in their profession. So a badge essentially is an image file. It's a .png file with data baked inside of it. What makes an open badge an open badge is that it has the following criteria, which are a badge name, a description, it has a list of criteria um, needed to be fulfilled to um, to earn the badge. It needs to have an issuer, so that's the organisation or individual that sits behind the badge and has issued it. Crucially here, the evidence that has led to the um, achievement of that badge. Um, and this is where an open badge has real power. It has the date issued and it can also have an expiry date. It has any a list of any standards that the badge um, complies to and searchable tags as well. So all of this data is, um, it is the meat within the ribs um, which are covered by the, the skin of the badge image and that's why we call it the Open Badge Anatomy. So Open Badges were created by, um, in, in the first instance, by the M Mozilla community that you may be aware of through um, their main product which is the Firefox Internet Browser. Um, and Mozilla is a, is a non-profit organization which creates um, products and uh, maintains communities of uh, people like myself around the world who um, work with them and work with the technologies developed by them um, to get them in the hands of learners, of um, ordinary users of the internet um, and promotes the open and collaborative nature of the internet. So it's a free technology, and at the centre of it is the learner. Learners like yourself earn badges from a range of contexts. Um, badges can be awarded for job training, online learning, or volunteering, and they're awarded directly to the learner. The learner then stores their badges uh, in a repository. Now there is a, a repository, a, a profile on Open Badge Academy, and you now have one. But there's also a free public um, repository which is called the Open Badge Backpack. And we're going to come back to that in a moment. On Backpack, you can collect your badges that you gain from multiple sources and share them and publish them how you choose. It's a learner-centered technology. So you can um, include uh, your badges embedded in, in your website or blog. Um, you can put them in your um, your LinkedIn account. You can share them on Facebook and Twitter and you can include, you can share them by hyperlink, which is a really good way of enhancing your CV. 
they can be used because of the evidence within them they can be used to unlock new possibilities lifelong learning and job opportunities in particular so what I'm going to do now is call on you to go to http colon forward slash forward slash backpack dot open badges dot org I'm going to ask you to pause this video now and go and explore that backpack and sign up and create yourself a backpack account welcome back to introduction to open badges we're now going to deal with why you might want to earn or issue digital badges at its core a badge has gains its power through the evidence within it a badge is a, is a digital means for learners to present evidence of their learning um, to prospective employers to prospective learning providers but also to um, allow that learner to see the learning that they've done, to revisit it, to aid retention of learning, um, and to allow the learner to share their experiences with um, both uh, potential employers and learning providers, but also their colleagues and peers. Um, the backpack, as you have already seen, pr provides everyone in the world through an email address um, with a digital lifelong learning record um, which can enhance a CV and which can provide a CPD record. For a learning provider using a platform like Open Badge Academy also has several advantages. Um, it allows um, learning to be uh, recorded in an, easy, in an easily verifiable way. It also um, allows for marking and feedback to be done anywhere and immediately. It allows that feedback, and this is crucial for learner and for tutors, that feedback to be viewed immediately. So learners can get feedback on, their on the courses that they've attended. If they require any further evidence to achieve the badge, that can be um, asked for directly and people can add additional evidence to the badge. I've used um, open badges in a range of contexts. I've used it for informal and formal courses, non-accredited and accredited learning, um, online courses and classroom-based courses, um, and for guided and self-directed learning. Um, you, you're taking part in self-directed learning now and earning badges, hopefully, as we go along. What's crucial here is that a badge gets its value from the way that it's designed, the evidence within it, the criteria needed to achieve it, and the trust placed in the issuing organization are what gives a badge its value. You can think of um, a badge as a digital certificate, an enhanced digital certificate, and a certificate has certain standard fields. It has a, the, the, the um, a statement of, of what the certificate was achieved for. It has the person's name. It has the um, issuing organization, maybe a signature and a date within it. What it doesn't have is the evidence of what was actually learned. And this is why, in some ways, certificates could be seen as a um, an offline um, reduced version of a digital badge rather than viewing badges as um, digital certificates. Just to build on that, I want to show you a few ways that I, um, as the DigiSkills Cymru project manager and a tutor, have been using open badges um, to uh, both uh, assess and accredit um, and evidence learning and to recognize that learning in an immediate way with some of our workplace-based learners, including um, tutors in, in adult education, uh, council refuse workers, people working in social care environments um, who have all taken part in a range of courses through the DigiSkills Cymru over the last few years. So, um, I've been recently running a course called Combat in Cyber, Cyber Violence and Online Bullying. Um, it's based on an Agored Cymru accredited unit 
and has uh, four learning outcomes uh, and uh, a range of, of assessment criteria. I've been running this course in workplaces up and down the country and a, a number of people have, have taken part and achieved um, through the use of their badge. This is the badge, it's called Combating Cyber Violence and Online Bullying. And through the design of this, we've built in a direct link to an accredited unit. Again, this is about the design of the, of the badge and about the standards that it needs to reach uh, to have value and to, and to pass the quality control um, needed for accreditation. And here is a, a group of uh, workers from Dusky Bro Keridigion who took part in um, the Combat and Cyber Violence course. What's crucial here is that the evidence was uh, often um, produced in, in, in written form. This is the group working on a, on a poster, on a group poster. And then the evidence for that is recorded through photograph or video and uploaded directly to the badge as evidence. But it, this isn't the only way to use open badges. They can be used in a different way depending upon the design. So also with Dusky Broker Edigion, we've been running a program of basic IT courses for staff in, in Keridigion Council. Um, we've been issuing those staff with badges, but indirectly. So they get a paper certificate, um, which they're much more comfortable with, often, because um, this is for people who maybe don't have a great, uh, a high level of, of digital skills to begin with. And badging is a way of enhancing their, their learning experience. So when they're issued with a digital certificate, they're also issued with a badge, but they have to go and claim that badge. This is the badge for um, online forms. They can scan a QR code to access that badge, or they can navigate directly to um, a badge issuing platform called Credly, which I'll talk to you about later, um, and enter a claim code to get that badge. Now we've created um, these certificates and uh, badges for all five of the sessions in the programme being delivered by Dusky Broke Heredigion for um, DigiSkills Cymru to the um, employees of Keridigion County Council. So that's an overview of open badges. Um, I hope you found it interesting and hopefully it's raised some um, questions in your mind. Now I'm going to um, now ask you to uh, pause the video in a moment um, and navigate to a website um, where you can learn more about open badges than I've been able to put over in this short introduction. That website is http colon forward slash forward slash badges dot think out loud club dot com and this is the open badges 101 course. Now this is a, is a work in progress course. Um, uh, it says on the site that it's unfinished but a lot of the content uh, that the designers of the course were wanting to put in there is in there. Um, if you start at the at the top on the on the bar at the top and start with start and work your way through the course, you can do this at your own pace. I recommend you take up to an hour to do it. Um, and within that, you can delve deep into the world of open badges and um, learn more about what by, about the technology and about how it's being used and see some of the resources um, that are available for people starting on their journey with open badges. So press pause now. Welcome back to introduction to open badges. Um, the next stage of today's session, um, I'd like you to open Open Badge Academy and go onto your page and open the Badge Explorer badge. Within this badge, um, you'll find um, some, a, a task, and that task um, you you can complete in your own way and in your own time. You have the option to choose how you upload evidence for the achievement of this badge. You can record a video, you can type some text, you can draw your ideas on a piece of paper and take a picture of it, or you can record an audio clip. Um, 
So that the, the format that you use to complete the task uh, is up to you. Um, this is a self-directed part of this course, so I encourage you to press pause on the video, open Open Badge Academy, and complete and claim the Badge Explore, Explorer badge. Welcome back to Introduction to Open Badges. Um, I hope you enjoyed the Badge Explorer badge. It's now time for you to take your learning forward, uh, both what you've learned on the Badge Explorer badge and through going through the badge, um, Open Badges 101 course. Um, and I'm going to encourage you to become a badge designer. Now, to complete this task, you will need a printout of the Open Badge, um, the Open Badge Academy Digital Me um, badge design canvas. You need this as a piece of paper. It works really well on a piece of A3 paper. If you can photocopy an A4 printout, that would be a really good way of doing it. I'm just going to, very briefly before we go in, I'm going to show you the different sections of the canvas so that you know what to expect. So the canvas prompts you to think about what kind of badge you would like to create, who is going to earn it, who's going to issue it, who's going to look at it, the skills and knowledge needed to, um, uh, the skills and knowledge that the badge represents, the behaviours that it encourages, the, um, the value proposition, so why it has value for the earner, the issuer and the person viewing it, um, who might endorse the learning of the badge, so is it an accredited learning, is it something done through CPD, um, the context in which it would be um, issued, is it part of a project or learning activity? Um, where will the learners display the badge? Um, and how will someone evidence their learning? And the, the evidence is extremely important. Beyond that, and, and below the line, um, it encourages you to look at whether the, the badge will be part of a wider learning pathway. Um, are other badges part of, um, an, is this part of an ecosystem with other badges? Are there different levels that the badge can be achieved at? Um, and what resources are needed for your badge to work? So it asks you to look at some of the technology, the expertise, and, and maybe even some money. Then you get to do the fun bit. Um, you get to create um, a badge design image um, and to complete the badge template. And the badge template, as you will see, looks very similar to the Open Badge Academy badges. And that's because it's encouraging you to design badges on that platform. So it has clear instructions about designing your badge in paper format um, and about how it could be branded. Um, the, as it says here, the Badge Academy platform contains a badge image designer tool that you can use. I personally use Prezi, um, the, the presentation tool I, I'm using right now to create badges. I just make a, a circle, choose one of their standard stock images um, or icons to use it. Um, inside the badge um, and, and that's how I create my badges on my academy and on um, Credly as well. So now is it, it's time for you to pause this video to go into Open Badge Academy again and to start the badge designer badge and don't forget to claim the badge once you have completed the task. Welcome back to Introduction to Open Badges. In this final part of the course, we're going to look at some alternatives to Open Badge Academy. So um, as an open standard, as a, as a technology that can be used by anyone, it was created by Mozilla as a free open source technology. The code for issuing open badges is available publicly on, um, on, on GitHub, uh, which is a programmer platform. Um, and it can be integrated directly into uh, WordPress websites. But one of the key places it was designed to work was in Moodle. So um, at this link, which is docs.moodle.org slash dev slash open badges, you can get all of the code for the plugin for a Moodle if 
if your organization uses Moodle as a virtual learning environment or a management information system. A commercially available alternative to Open Badge Academy is Open Badge Passport. It's um, a Finnish company that sits behind this. Um, I've worked with them, talked to them in the past, and they have a really robust system, um, which you can go and have a look at at openbadgepassport.com. But the one that I'm going to take you uh, or encourage you to go and have a have a look at directly is Credly. This is my other badge issuing platform um, uh, beyond Open Badge Academy. When I'm creating more informal or open um, badges that that are there to encourage people to get started with badges um, and don't always have evidence directly uploaded into them, um, I use Credly. I sometimes refer to it as a, a lightweight badge platform where people can get used to issuing badges and get used to creating them. Um, so you may want to go and have a look at this. So I encourage you to pause this video and go to credly.com, C-R-E dly.com and create an account and have an explore of some of the badges available there. Welcome back to Introduction to Open Badges. Now you've explored badge platforms, you've gained the Badge Explorer and the Badge Designer badge. Um, you're ready to take your Open Badge experience to the next level. You can, through Open Badge Academy, search for the Badge Issuer Badge, which will take you through the steps you need to become a badge issuer in your own right. This isn't part of today. This is something for you to go away in your own time or in your professional life and explore how you and your organization may become badge issuers and use digital credentials effectively for your learners, your colleagues, or in whatever context you might want to issue somebody with recognition or credential. So this is um, the end of the session. I'm just going to give you my contact details now. Um, I'm Richard Spate. My email address is digiskills.cumry at gmail.com. You can follow us at um, digiskillscumry on Twitter and use the hashtag Open Badges to share your experiences with Open Badges. This project ends on the 31st of March 2017. Unison has a number of other Wales Union Learning Fund projects available and we hope to carry forward the work of DigiSkills Cymru in one way or another beyond the end of March. So watch this space, watch our Twitter, follow us and Hopefully we will be around to um, continue helping public services and the uh, adult community learning sector to experiment and innovate with digital technology in the future. This presentation um, was created by me, by Richard Spate, and is available on a Creative Commons license under an Attribution Share Alike 4.0 international license, which means that you can go to the web address there, prezi.com, make a copy of my Prezi presentation, adapt it and use it for your own purposes as long as you attribute the original um, work in this to um, me and to the DigiSkills Cymru project. And finally, I would like to encourage everyone who takes part in this course to fill in a Wolf Learner form um, this allows my project to count the fact that you've taken part in the course. Um, it's really quick and simple. Um, there's an online form. Um, it is bit.ly slash 2, lowercase e, uppercase wolf, w-u-l-f, and then lowercase badges, all one word, 2 e wolf badges to take you to a Google form you could submit your name and um, contact details there even if you've already completed a wolf form in the past and um, just let us know that you have completed it while you're completing it and click submit 
and that will help um, both Unison and my my project DigiSkills Cymru to evidence um, what activity we've been doing at our um, Welsh government funders. Thank you very much. Diolch Goodbye.